Come on, Kwesi. We're almost there. Not much left on this one. Don't stop when it hurts. Stop when you're done. 98. 99. One hundred. Whoo! Oh, burns so good. Oh, way to finish strong. Oh, how's it going everyone? I didn't see you there. Now, before you ask, no, I didn't just do 100 curl to hammer curl transitions right now. Although that would be impressive, wouldn't it? But I did get my workout in today and it inspired me to do tonight's video. We're in the middle of summer here in the Northern Hemisphere, which means there's various amounts of nebulae targets now populating our night sky. And tonight I'm going to be going after another Messier object that I'm photographing for the first time but I'm going to take a slightly different approach as to how I do it. I got a head start on some data last week, so tonight I'm going to be collecting additional data to add on top of that. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I flex on Messier 27, also known as the Dumbbell Nebula. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Now that I've finished hitting the showers, let's talk about tonight's subject, Messier 27, or the Dumbbell Nebula, is a planetary nebula located in the constellation of Volpecula at a distance of 1,360 light years away from Earth. Discovered by Charles Messier on July 12, 1764, it has a prolate spheroid shape and is viewed from our perspective along the plane of its equator. The central region of M27 contains dark and bright knots, which vary in size and shape. Some are symmetrical and have tails, while others do not. The knots are anywhere from 11 to 35 billion miles in size and each of them has a mass three times that of Earth. Planetary nebulae are what our own sun will produce when it nears the end of its life and nuclear fusion stops within its core. These nebulae are formed when evolved giant stars eject their outer envelopes, exposing the hot core of the star, which then ionizes the surrounding cloud of expelled material with ultraviolet light. The clouds keep expanding until they dissipate into the surrounding space. So to photograph M27, I'll be using my largest refractor telescope the Orion Eon 130ED. And for imaging, I'll be using my other one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. And of course, as usual, this will all be sitting on top of my trusty mount, the Orion Atlas Pro AZEQG. And for this imaging session, I'll be focusing on pulling specific wavelengths of light from the nebula. So I'll be using the Optolong L-Extreme multi-band pass narrowband filter. 
So without further ado, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Dumbbell Nebula. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've completed my setup procedures for all of my equipment, and I'm now inside of APT and my imaging session for the Dumbbell Nebula is now currently in progress. And everything seems to be going pretty smoothly so far. So you can see M27 right in the center of the image. And from my point of view, it's kind of shaped like an hourglass. So some people refer to it as the hourglass nebula. And you might also hear the term apple core nebula because it kind of resembles an apple core. So as usual, I'll be taking a series of three minute exposures and I'll be doing a focus check during every hour. Unfortunately, I did see a few clouds coming up on the southern horizon, so hopefully it doesn't interfere with any of my work, but I'll be keeping a close eye on that. So I want to try and collect at least, hopefully, three hours of data tonight to add to what I did last week, and that should hopefully give me a great image of M27. So apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty well. So I'll just continue to monitor the progress of the imaging session. And as usual, I'll just see how the night progresses. So stay tuned. everybody so I want to give you all a quick update it's about 1 a.m. right now and I've completed doing my focus check and M27 recently crossed the meridian so I had to do a meridian flip as well as recalibrate the mount but everything is back to normal now so I'm continuing to take my exposures so I wanted to take a quick moment to talk about narrowband imaging. This type of imaging focuses on specific wavelengths on the visible spectrum. And in astrophotography, we tend to focus on three specific ones. These are hydrogen alpha, sulfur two, and oxygen three. H alpha and S2 are within the red portion of the spectrum, and O3 is in the blue portion of the spectrum. And the most popular color combination for these three wavelengths is what's known as the Hubble palette, or SHO. So that means that the S2 data goes into the red channel, H alpha goes into green and O3 goes into blue to create that specific pattern of colors. If you've ever seen the famous Pillars of Creation photo from the Hubble Space Telescope, this is an example of the Hubble palette in action. Monochrome or black and white cameras are what's most commonly used for narrowband imaging 
as you can select a filter that's dedicated for that wavelength and you can place it in front of the camera sensor to record that data. However, if you have a color camera such as a DSLR or mirrorless camera, or like I use a one-shot color astrophotography camera, you can still do narrowband imaging, but you have to use what's known as a multi-band pass narrowband filter. And these filters pass multiple wavelengths using a single filter. And they come in either duo band, tri band, or quad band configurations. So, for example, the Optolong L Extreme that I'm using for tonight is a duo band filter that passes both H alpha and O3. So, I'll be creating a bi color narrow band image. And the most popular combination for HA and O3 is what's known as HOO. So I'll be placing the H alpha data in the red channel and the O3 data in the green and blue channels. And another cool thing about narrowband imaging, apart from it pretty much blocking all light pollution, it can also block moonlight. So you can do this during moonlit nights as well. So if you're somebody who lives near a lot of light pollution, I would recommend trying narrowband imaging as you can select specific wavelengths and create a vast plethora of color combinations. So the possibilities are practically endless in terms of creativity. Well, I've completed my data collection and I'm starting to wrap things up for tonight. I was able to capture over three hours of data tonight, which was really good. And combining that with what I was able to do last week, that should give me a good data set to play around with. Also, the clouds that I was dealing with earlier this evening were able to dissipate. So fortunately, they weren't doing any interference. Also, the Optolong L Extreme filter performed really well tonight. So I'm looking forward to processing the data to hopefully create a really good narrowband image. So I'm currently working on my calibration frames. Then I'll pack everything up go home and get some sleep. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Dumbbell Nebula at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care and I wish you all clear skies.